Hey folks, this is Brett Pruitt uh, once again here, and uh, we're going to go over some uh, what, what things to look for in an RV. And this is some stuff from uh, a book that I purchased. Um, we're not going to go into great detail of a lot of their stuff to keep from stealing it. Uh, I will put a link up where you can purchase this book for yourself uh, with the video. But at any rate, uh, some of the things that you want to take a look at is um, Let's take a look at the frame. That's that's going to be your main thing is a quality frame. Tubular steel or aluminum is actually the best. It's going to be the strongest uh, type of frame. And uh, you know next you'll you'll see a lot of your I beams and your and your C channels. Um, the nice thing about having a welded aluminum tubular or tubular aluminum structure like you see here is it's lightweight and it's extremely strong. And you don't have to worry about your aluminum uh, rotting should you get any water in the trailer. As far as your chassis goes, uh, tubular steel again is the best. Oftentimes, though, you're going to see C channel and I beam or L channel. I would recommend staying with at least an I beam or a C channel uh, if you can't get the tubular uh, frame simply because it is stronger. But we also would recommend a 16 inch cross member uh, on center instead of 24 uh, because, again, it, it's, it's real strong. Um, you want to look at your welds like you see here. You've got a good spot weld. Your frame should be powder coated painting. Um, any of the uh, uh, welds that are on your aluminum superstructure should be complete all the way around. And the main thing you see here is this A-frame attached under basement. That is a good idea to have as well because it just provides that lateral shift control uh, that you would have in your trailer. Um, I'm going to kind of just go over some of this stuff quick because it's not real important. There are pros and cons to having the covered underbelly. Main thing is, is it does help to keep the critters out. Uh, it does look a lot nicer. It will actually help you in towability as far as gas mileage goes. But where it becomes a real pain in the backside is if you should have to do any work at all uh, to the unit, you will find that it, it can be rather cumbersome um, because you have to find a way to get that taken down. Uh, like I said, the disadvantages there. Uh, aluminum framing superstructure versus wood is much better, <coughs> especially if they do a vacuum bonded laminated construction for the walls. That's basically where you've got a, your fiberglass on the outside with a, a thin layer of some sort of uh, waterproofing membrane luon, then your frame with your uh, rigid foam insulation, and then again luon again with any backers that are needed. Uh, you, you'll get a really sturdy wall. Um, as far as your siding goes, you, you've got two different people that believe in whether it's aluminum or um, uh, you know, a fiberglass. I particularly like fiberglass better than aluminum because it usually doesn't leak as much. However, if you've got a rubber roof like I do, you've got a lot more work to do in order to keep the streaks off the side of your coach. Uh, aluminum also, if you should get in a hailstorm, is going to ding really badly. Um, you know, there, there's pros and cons to all different types of sidings. Fiberglass is probably superior, and, and just about everybody. Gel coat fiberglass in particular uh, because it's better on your finishes. Interior finishes for your cabinets. Look for the ones that are glued and screwed. You know, if you're going to buy an RV to live in full time, don't half ass it and buy the cheap cabinets and stuff. Go out, fill the cabinets. Like in mine, which, you know, I, I have. Ash wood cabinets. I mean, that's one of the things I can say about Keystone. I'm, a, I'm kind of a Keystone whore to a point. The two, the two firms that I like best are Evergreen because they, you know, in their travel trailers, they build them out of uh, composite material instead of uh, uh, plywood, which is a whole lot better for you. They also do a great job with their floor. They, they vacuum bond the floor to the frame so you don't have it peeling up on you. And they also use a glued and screwed cabinet. Um, that's like what you have in your house. The stuff you don't want is the staples. You want to look for, like, if you can look in this picture, dovetail edges, um, solid hardwoods. Uh, don't go for the cheap laminate DS that's out there. Your doors should, your doors and drawers should be hardwoods. Your frames, those can be a covered, uh, you know, uh, fiber board of some sort or another to a point, but again, they need to be screwed and glued and they need to be. Uh, you know, you, you also want to have your drawers frames, like you see in here, these drawer frames. You want those things to have some rigidity to them. You, don't want, you, you want to be able to put a 20-pound barbell in that thing and have it hold up, if that makes sense. Uh, plumbing lines and fixture lines. 
A lot of them are using compression fit fittings, uh, PVCs and plastics. That is okay. Keep in mind that you can have a freezing problem in the winter if you didn't buy a Four Seasons coach or what they call an Arctic insulated coach. Um, they are easy to repair, but you've got to keep your eyes peeled because things kind of hit the wall on you. LED lighting fixtures, uh, absolutely a must. Um, they will save you a buttload. Keep, keep in mind, um, let me grab one real quick. All right, this is an incandescent bulb. They run hot and they will cause problems for you in the fact that they die rather quickly and easily. Um, LEDs, on the other hand, let me see if I can grab one of my LEDs. I'm the heck with it. We'll worry about it later. But an LED, as you can see in the picture here, they last a tons longer, they're cool, and they don't burn up as, uh, as much energy. That bulb that I showed you would use 1.2 amps. And a light fixture that has two of those bulbs, you've got uh, 2.4 amps. I can run almost every light in this ca uh, motor coach that are on LEDs, and every light you see that's on right now is an LED light. The one above here, the one behind me is an LED light. The two on this side, the ones in the kitchen, everything in here is LED. All of those units can run with the same amount of power as two of those bulbs in my entire coach. So that's going to save you tons of money in electricity. I mean, it, it will literally, if, if you had a coach that had incandescent bulbs and you use it for one month and then you go put LEDs in the next month, your bill will drop 15 to $20 depending upon where you live. Guaranteed. Insulation is another thing. Look for the higher R values. That's one of the nice things about an Arctic coach. I mean, they'll have oftentimes an R32 in the floors, R19s in the walls, R21s in the ceilings. Um, you want to look for good R factors. If you can find them, get double pane windows. If you can't find them, see about what the replacement cost for double pane would be. That puts a thermal break between the two glasses. Air is a thermal break. Air does not transmit heat and cool as easy as any other medium does. Like steel will translate straight through. Wood's pretty good, but steel isn't. And glass, it will automatically transmit through anything. And if you don't believe me, take a cold glass of iced tea on a hot summer day that's humid and watch how fast it condenses. That's why if you've got two panes, and you got air in between them, that air is a thermal break and will help uh, to not transmit as much of your heat outside in the winter or your air conditioning outside and the heat from the outside in in the summertime. It also helps with noise. Um, you know, the, they talk about air spaces. Again, you can buy some of this stuff in their roofs. You've got everything from a rubber roof, a fiberglass molded shell roof, which is actually the best. Um, the, the TPO vinyl is very good. The rubbers, which you're going to find a lot of times, as long as you, every at least every time that you change from winter to spring and from, for, again, from summer to winter, you know, every six months you get up there and you reseal that rubber, you won't have any problems. The problem with rubber boils down to this. It gets uh, a dingy, streaky looking thing down the side of your coach and you've got to wash them more. That's where the fiberglass molded shell, the fiberglass gel coated or are much much better. Aluminum is probably the worst in my opinion just and this is my opinion just because it will subsell to hail damage if you get a, a branch that hits your roof you get a dent in it and furthermore there's oftentimes areas for water to intrude whereas with a rubber roof it's one sheet that covers the whole thing and if it's fiberglass the same thing so that you don't have any water intrusion as easy because you're going to have enough with your with your vent fans and your skylights and your and your air conditioners, you'll have enough holes in your in your roof and plenty of opportunity to leak water as it is. Um, another good reason for the rubber is because Dicor works best on rubber. I have found. Um, another thing to keep in mind is is look for drip edges. You don't want to have your roof meeting exactly with your walls and a nice smooth feature. That's where leaks are caused. If you have a drip edge and there's a break there, that's going to help that water pour off and not come back behind the wall and into your motor coach. Uh, we're not going to talk about payloads in this video because there's just too much there. Again, you can buy this book. But keep in mind, the average towable, you're going to need a minimum of a full-size truck. Um, the fifth wheels, uh, there are some that are full, that are half ton towable, but typically you're going to need the, the bigger heavy duty uh, trucks that are out there. And that's going to wrap it up here. Our next video, we're going to talk about the different classes of RVs and uh, things of that sort. Again, thanks for watching.